So now we can select our start and ending points and it takes us directly to the map screen. Let's go ahead and set up our map screen UI. So I'm going to jump into our map screen and let's first pass in a scaffold here. Within that we'll have an app bar and we'll pass in an app bar. Again, I'm just going to change the color of the app bar by saying colors.white. Then I'm just going to pass in a leading, which is going to be an icon button. Within that, we'll just pass in an on pressed, which we'll set up shortly and pass in an icon. Here basically I've passed in a circle avatar, which has got a background color of white. And then I've passed in an icon with an arrow back icon and a color of black. So we've got an icon here. For the on pressed, I'm just going to pass in navigator.pop so that we're popped back to the previous screen. And we just need to pass in the context there. I'm also just going to remove the elevation from here by saying elevation of zero. Now we need to go ahead and pass in our map here. For the map, we'll add in another dependency. We'll go into the pubspec.yaml and here below Google Place, we'll pass in Google Maps Flutter. And we're currently using this particular version. Let's save that. Let's call pubget. Once we have that installed, we need to go ahead and set that up in our Google Cloud platform. So let's head over to our console again. We need to go into your API library. Since we're testing it out on iOS, we'll go to the Maps SDK for iOS and make sure that you enable it here. Mine's already enabled, so it's showing me Manage. Then for iOS, we need to go into our app delegate.swift and we need to pass in this line of code here. So I'm just going to copy that, come back into our app, go into our iOS folder, go into the runner folder, and here we have our app delegate.swift. Inside the method body, I'm going to paste that in. For your API key, you can use the same API key that you used for the Google Autocomplete. So I'm just going to go to the search screen and here I'm going to copy out this API key and then paste it in here. And here on top, we just need to import in Google Maps and save that out. I'm going to just stop our app and rebuild it. Once that's done, we can head back to our map screen and we can go ahead and import in our Google Map. So I'm going to come down here and in our scaffold, let's pass in a body and within that, let's pass in our Google Map. So I'll say Google Map. As we can see, Google Map requires initial camera position. So I'm going to pass that in. And for the initial position, we'll get the Latin long of the start position that we had selected. So let's head back to the search screen here. And in the map screen, let's pass in our start and end positions. So I'm going to say start position and pass that in. And similarly, we'll pass in the end position and pass that in as well. Now we can jump into our map screen and set up these two values here. So I'll say final details result, pass in start position. And similarly, we'll say final details result and pass in our end position. Because these two positions initially are a nullable type, I'm just going to pass in a question mark here as well and then create our constructor. Now let's go ahead and set up our initial position. So we need a data type of camera position, which is available to us from Google Maps. And let's call that initial position. And since we're going to be setting it up later, let's just pass in late here. We'll then set up our init state method within which we'll say initial position is equal to, we'll call the camera position method. And in the target, we'll use lat long, which again is available to us from Google Maps. Within that, we can pass in our latitude and longitude. So we'll say widget dot start position dot geometry dot location and then access the lat from that. Then for the longitude, again, we'll say widget dot start position dot geometry dot location and get the longitude. And here we need to pass in an exclamation mark as well. Let's save that out and let's pass this initial position to our Google map. So coming down here, I'm going to say initial position. And as we can see, we're getting our map here, but it's really zoomed out. We need to just set in a zoom value as well. So for the zoom, I'm just going to set this value that's available from the library itself. After the target, let's paste that in. It's a value of 14.4746. Let's save that. I'm just going to go back once, select our positions again. And as we can see, we're zoomed in much better now. But as of now, we don't have our markers. So let's go ahead and set up our markers. So here inside our build method is where we'll set up our markers. So the data type of the marker is going to be a set of type marker. And then we'll call that markers is equal to, it's going to be an object within which we'll pass in marker, which is available to us from Google Maps. 
Inside this, we need to pass in a marker ID. So for the first one, we'll just say marker ID and call it start. Then we need to pass in a position. Again, we'll use lat long. We already have the start position, so I'm going to copy that in here. Let's also add our end position by copying this marker again. And here, instead of start position, I'm going to make this end position. And let's close out the markers. And let's also change the marker ID to end. Now to add the markers to the Google map, we'll use markers and then say set dot from to extract it out and pass in the markers. And as we can see, we're getting the marker already. In case you don't see it, you can go back, select the position again, and you should see the marker. But as of now, we're zoomed in only to our start marker. We also want to show the end position. So I couldn't find an easy way available in the library to show all the markers. So let's try a quick Google search. So if you type in Flutter Google Map Show All Markers, the very first result we get from Stack Overflow tells us how we can do that. If we come down here, we have a null safety version of it as well. So I'm going to select that. And as we can see, we need to create a lat long bound. That lat long bound then needs to be passed in to our Google Map to let it know that we wanted to zoom out to show the particular markers. So I'm just going to copy this out from here and I'll put a link to this in the description for you to access. So let's copy this complete class. Let's head back to Android Studio. In our project, we'll create this new class within our lib folder. Let's just call it map utils. So map underscore utils dot dot. We don't actually need the class. We can just copy the code inside it, but it's just easier. So we're going to paste this in here, save this, come back to the page. As we can see, once we set up our Google map, that is when this on map created method is called, then we can call a future dot delayed and update the camera position. So I'm just going to copy out this complete on map created method, jump back to our map screen and let's paste that in. I'm just going to get rid of all this code above future dot delayed. Let's pull in our map utils and let's save that out. Let's just go back one page, then again, select our position. And as we can see, the map is trying to zoom out to show our two positions. But as of now, the positions are just at the edge of the screen. So let's just modify the code in our map utils a little bit. As we can see, it's fairly easy to understand. Basically what it's doing is it's getting us a Northeast region and a Southwest region. And we want to extend these regions a little bit. So since the Northeast is increasing to the right, I'm just going to add a value of one to it. So for the Northeast position, which is towards the right, I'm going to add a value of one to the latitude and a value of one to the longitude as well. And for the Southwest position, I'm going to reduce the values by one for both the latitude and longitude. Let's save that out. I'm just going to move back and select the value again. And as you can see, we now have both the markers in view.